If you've never rented an apartment before, then here's what you need to know to put someone's floor over your head and someone else's ceiling under your feet. Hello and welcome to Practical Personal Finance, where you get the information you need to understand and succeed with money. Today, I'm going to take you step by step through the process of renting an apartment. There are going to be seven steps in total. And before we get started, I want to point out that there's a difference between apartments, condos, and townhomes. Apartments are what you have when one person or one company owns an entire building or an entire complex. And that person or company rents out individual units in that complex. Condos tend to look a lot like apartments, but instead of one person or company owning all of the units, each unit is owned individually. And lastly, townhomes are typically owned individually like condos, but they also include the plot of land that they occupy. This particular video is going to be about apartments specifically, but many of the steps could be applied to condos, townhomes, and even single family homes. And one more thing, I've created a PDF containing all of these steps, so you don't need to worry about taking notes. Link to that PDF is down below. With all that being said, let's get to the steps. Step one is to determine how much you can afford to spend on rent every month. This is both a very personal decision and a very important financial decision. Your rent is most likely going to be your largest monthly expense. It's also going to largely determine where you can live and how many square feet you get. When you're determining a monthly rent budget, you need to focus on both your income and your future financial goals. If you would like to eventually pay off your student loans or save up a down payment on a home, it's going to be a lot easier if you're spending less on rent. My suggestion is to spend somewhere between 25 and 35% of your monthly income after taxes on rent. The right amount for you is going to be dependent on your income and where you live. For a more detailed explanation, I made an entire video dedicated to this specific topic, and there's a link down below. Step two is to do some research about what area you would like to live in and what rent prices are like in that area. If you're moving to a new city hundreds or thousands of miles away, this part can be a little tricky since it's not easy to go and explore in person. My suggestion when moving to a new place is to consider where you'll be spending most of your time, like an office or a college campus, and begin your search for an apartment close to that location. Living somewhere an hour away from work or school just to save a few bucks on rent gets old real quick. Some other things to think about are grocery stores you like to do your shopping at, the types of restaurants you like to eat at, and gyms you'll be a member of. Google Maps has an awesome feature called My Maps, where you can drop a bunch of markers on a virtual map to determine which areas might work well for you. I'll leave a link to My Maps down below. After you determine an area you would like to live in, go to Zillow to start getting a rough idea for what apartment prices are like in the area. Filter by the number of bedrooms and bathrooms you're looking for and add in your monthly budget from step one. At this point, you should be getting a pretty good idea of how well your monthly budget lines up with your expectations for an apartment. If the area you're looking at is too expensive and you wanna stay within your budget, you've got two choices. Look for nearby areas that are less expensive, or consider teaming up with one or two roommates and splitting the rent. For students and young professionals who are just getting started with renting, roommates are a great option. I lived with roommates for seven years, right up until I got married. I had to sacrifice some privacy, but I never paid more than $750 per month in rent during those years. Before I move on to the next step, if you're getting some value out of this video so far, then do me a huge favor and click that like button down below. By doing so, you'll be signaling to YouTube that this content is valuable and you'll help my channel continue to grow. Thanks. Now, once you've located an area that lines up with your budget and resolved any roommate searches, step three is to identify some apartment complexes which might be a good fit for you. You can continue your search on Zillow use another website like PadMapper or Craigslist, or hop in the car and look for convenient apartments that way. Make a list of the names, locations, and monthly rent prices for the units you're interested in. 
read some reviews by doing a Google search for each apartment complex on your list. You don't need to be scared off by bad reviews, but read through them to get an idea of what to expect by looking for common themes and complaints from residents. What you're doing here is creating a plan for which apartment complexes you wanna give further consideration. I'd suggest aiming for six to eight different options within your desired area and budget. Step four is to go and visit the different apartment complexes one by one. It's always a good idea to call ahead and set up an appointment with the property manager so he or she will be ready to greet you and walk you through the units when you arrive. Set aside a day on your calendar for apartment hunting and schedule back-to-back -back appointments throughout the day. Just make sure you leave some time for travel between each complex and for lunch. A word to the wise when it comes to walking through apartments. Make sure you're walking through the actual apartment you're going to be renting. Sometimes property managers will want to show you a sample unit or another similar unit that's currently vacant. To me, this is a red flag. Would you walk into a car dealership and buy a used car without taking it for a test drive or even sitting in it? Of course not. So how could you agree to rent an apartment and pay 10, 20, or even $30,000 over the course of a year without seeing the actual unit? When you're making the appointment, make it clear that you would like to see the actual unit you'll be renting. If your request is not honored, I would tread very carefully. After you visited several apartment complexes and you found one that fits the bill, step five is to submit an application. You'll need to provide your personal information like your name, current address, phone number, and email address so the property manager knows how to get in touch with you. You'll need to provide some proof of employment, either with a W-2 tax form or a few recent pay stubs to prove you'll be able to pay the monthly rent. You'll need to provide your social security number so they can run a background check and check your credit score. And you may need to provide one or two references, someone who can vouch for the fact that you're a responsible adult who will follow the rules and pay the rent on time. Don't be surprised if you're hit with an application fee as well to cover the cost of the background and credit checks. Once your application has been accepted, step six is to sign the lease and submit your down payment. The lease is a contract between you as the renter and the owner or owners of the apartment complex. It's going to contain details about everything from how much your monthly rent will be to how much notice you will need to provide before you intend to move out. Read the lease carefully. If there's a part you don't understand, ask for clarification and keep a copy of your signed lease in a safe place. When problems inevitably arise, the lease is what will guide you to the proper resolution. Along with signing the lease, you'll need to pay what I like to think of as a down payment. This will generally include the first month's rent plus another month's rent as a security deposit. If you follow the rules of the lease and leave the apartment clean when you move out, you'll get that security deposit back. If you leave the place a mess, stain the carpets, and leave holes in the wall, they'll keep it to pay for the cleaning and repairs. Some apartments will also require you to pay the final month's rent up front as well making the down payment, in certain cases, three months rent. Getting into an apartment is not cheap. With your lease signed and your down payment submitted, step seven is to move in. Some apartments will only allow you to move in on specific days or times, and in some cases they may even charge a fee for moving in or out. Whether you've hired movers or you're renting a U-Haul and doing it yourself, move-in day is always exciting. Make an effort to meet your neighbors in all four directions and establish a positive relationship with them from the beginning. The walls, floors, and ceilings in apartments tend to be thin, and it's a lot easier to ask someone you're friendly with to turn down their music than someone who's a complete stranger. Other than that, enjoy your new apartment. Are you an experienced renter or someone who's moving out on your own for the first time? Let me know in the comments. If you'd like a copy of these seven steps in PDF format, click the link down below. If you're interested in my tips and tricks for finding a great rental, click right here. And if you're not yet a PPF subscriber, click right here. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Andrew Shear, and I'll see you next time.